What's up everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about what lung capacity is and why it's an important factor to consider for your athletes and their performance. You'll also learn about spirometry and how to conduct a simple spirometry test to assess lung capacity and function. And finally, we'll talk about how you can improve your lung capacity using different respiratory training devices and exercises. Keep watching. Okay, welcome to this presentation. For those who are new here, my name is Sean. I'm the founder at Upside Strength, and my goal today is to help you better understand lung capacity, why it's important, how you can measure it, and finally, what you can do to train it in order to improve your athlete's sports performance. Before we jump into it, I'd really appreciate it if you took a few seconds to click the like button below and subscribe to the channel so you can get instant access to all my new podcasts, presentations, and other videos that I publish around here. With that said, let's get started. So today we'll start by looking at uh, lung capacity, what it is, why it's important for performance, and how we can uh, measure it in our athletes. Uh, we're gonna talk about spirometry, how to conduct a spirometry test, how to read the results and uh, find potential respiratory limitations uh, in our athletes. And finally, we're gonna talk about the training aspect, how to increase your lung capacity, what different respiratory devices are available on the market, and what the different training protocols might look like in order to reestablish lung capacity. So let's start with part one about lung capacity. What is lung capacity? If we take this definition, lung capacity or total lung capacity is the volume of air in the lungs upon the maximum effort of inspiration from Delgado and all in their 2020 paper. So to talk simply, it's how much volume, how much room you have available inside your lungs. This is influenced by a few different parameters such as age, gender, height, weight and ethnicity and to give you a rough idea normal lung capacity for the average male is about six liters one little uh, technical caveat to uh, mention here is that total lung capacity from a clinical standpoint is equal to vital capacity plus the residual volume we're not going to talk about residual volume today and i'm gonna take the liberty to use lung capacity and vital capacity interchangeably uh, i'm sure you'll excuse me for that little uh, shortcut. Why is lung capacity important? I want to start by mentioning that whether you work with endurance athletes, uh, whether it's cycling, swimming, running, or other, or intermittent sports such as rugby or soccer, we now know thanks to technologies such as uh, the MOXIE that is shown here that all efforts, regardless of their nature, are going to require oxygen to be taken into the organism transport it to the working muscles, utilized, and then for CO2 to be extracted. This is done by primarily three big physiological systems, the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, and the metabolic or muscular system. Those three big systems work together to fuel our performance, to talk simply. And so we can see that the respiratory system plays a central role in this, uh, hence why being able to measure how much lung capacity we have and uh, train it if necessary is really important for all athletes. So how can we measure vital capacity? How can we determine how much lung space our athlete have? When we think about those kind of tests, we often think about a lab setting with lots of tubes and cables and expensive equipment in a difficult setting. This is not what we're gonna talk about today. We wanna talk about something that's practical, something that can be used in the gym or on the field. And for this, we're gonna talk about spirometry, which is a simple, cheap and effective test that can be conducted in just a few minutes anywhere that you uh, find yourself with your athlete. So for those who don't know what spirometry is, we're going to take this Wikipedia definition. Spirometry is the most common of pulmonary function tests. It measures lung function, specifically the amount and or speed of air that can be inhaled and exhaled. We're going to dive into the nuances of those different terms in a few seconds. Let's now look at what the procedure is for a spirometry test. The first thing that you're going to want to do is collect your age, height, weight, sex, and ethnicity data for your athlete. You want to either write this on a piece of paper or input this directly in the spirometer if uh, that is one of the functions that it carries. Step two is going to be to conduct the test. Here you want to emphasize a full inhale followed by a maximum forced exhale for at least six seconds it's really really important to emphasize the maximum effort exhale part because if uh, the athlete or the client doesn't blow as hard as they can as fast as they can 
into this barometer, you are going to get skewed results and you're not going to be able to use the information. You want to make sure you complete at least three valid tests. Uh, again, the test takes just a few seconds, so it can easily be repeated a few times over a couple minutes. You want to then record either the average or your best test score. And the last step is going to be to compare what you got uh, to normative data. You can either do this directly in this barometer if it has, again, that function, or you can compare your athlete's data to normative data that's available. I'll put a link in the description. The link gets you to a reference table that compiles over 160,000 data points from dozens of different clinical centers around the planet. Uh, so you know you can compare your athlete's data to uh, the best data out there. Next, we're gonna look at how we can read the results from our spirometry test, uh, how to interpret the spirometry results. So the first value, there's three values that we're gonna be looking at. The first value is gonna be FVC here at the top. Uh, FVC stands for forced vital capacity. It's expressed in liters. And essentially it is, it represents the amount of space that is available in your athlete's lungs in order to get air in. Okay, we wanna compare this value to normative data. Here you can see on the spirometer screen, since we already entered our athlete's uh, profile in the unit, it compares their results to the norm for their specific characteristics. And in this case, you can see that this FVC is 120% of the predicted value for that person. The next value we're going to be looking at is FEV1, and this stands for forced expiratory volume in one second. It's also expressed in liters or liters over one second and is the amount of air that the person can breathe out in the first second of the test. Why is this important? We often think about breathing uh, and the diaphragm and inspiration, but actually at higher intensities, the expiratory muscles, our ability to exhale enough and get all the CO2 out of the system is very, very important and often overlooked. So we wanna make sure that we measure that as well here in this test. And again, we can see this value compared to the normative data for this person's profile. The third data point we wanna look at is the ratio between those two values, which is FEV1 over FVC. It's expressed in a percentage value, and we want to see this between 78 and 85%. If we have a value that is below 78%, it would indicate that the amount of air that that person can breathe out in one second is too low compared to the total space that they have available in their lungs. And so that would indicate an expiratory limitation. Next, we're gonna look at what a capacity and an expiratory limitation looks like on the screen. So here you can see that those values are well below the predicted values for that person's profile. In addition to that, the ratio is at 60.1%, which is much lower than the 78% that we want to be seeing. So here we can assume a potential capacity limitation. So the total volume that they have available to breathe in and out is not big enough compared to what they should be able to do. And their ability to breathe out is even more restricted. And we clearly see that by the 56% uh, predicted value here and the very low FEV1 to FVC ratio. I wanna add an important uh, caveat to all of this. These are the same diagnostic criteria that are used to diagnose restrictive and obstructive uh, respiratory disorders in a clinical setting. So if your athlete or your client is in poor health or has a history, a uh, family history of pulmonary issues or res respiratory issues, you wanna make sure you refer that person out to a medical professional because instead of uh, a capacity or an expiratory limitation, what you might actually be seeing is a restrictive or an obstructive respiratory disorder that needs to be diagnosed and treated by a medical professional. I want, just wanna quickly thank Evan Pycon for pointing that out upon reviewing the presentation. So always keep that in mind, please, and do the right thing, refer out don't play doctor with your clients. Now that we know how to read the results, we know how to determine whether or not there's a respiratory limitation that's present, we're gonna talk about the training aspect. How can we improve our lung volume from a structural standpoint? We wanna first determine whether the person can fully move their uh, rib cage uh, in and out, and we wanna make sure that person can rotate, flex, and extend their thoracic spine, because if that's not the case, that might be the reason why they cannot breathe in enough air or breathe out fast enough. So we wanna address that structural uh, component first, 
And then we wanna try to combine that with some respiratory training, which we're gonna dive into in just a second. I wanna first show you what respiratory training devices are available currently on the market. Uh, these are just a few to give you a good uh, overview and example. We've got the Spire Tiger from ADIAG, the AeroFit, the P100 from ADIAG as well, the Breather, the Powerlong. There are other ones out there. The important thing to remember is that they're not all the same. What I mean by that is that the different parameters that are important to respiratory training, namely volume, frequency, resistance, uh, the distinction between inhale and exhale, not all those devices allow you to control and manipulate all those constraints. So for example, in our case here, if we're talking about vital capacity, expiratory uh, power, we want to be conscious of volume since we're trying to work on that parameter specifically and you want to pick the right tool for the job. From all the devices you see here, only the Spire Tiger and the P100, both from ADIAG, allow you to uh, track and manipulate volume during your training. And why is this so important is because since our outcome, our goal is volume oriented, not tracking volume during training would be the equivalent of lifting weights without knowing how much weight is on the bar. So pick the right tool for the job and don't play darts in the dark. So how can we train our lung capacity from a practical standpoint? How can we increase our vital capacity, uh, make sure our expiratory muscles are strong enough, powerful enough to breathe out uh, when we need them to? The first thing that we wanna do is, like I just mentioned, focus on volume, both on the inhale and the exhale. We, wanna, we don't wanna play guessing games. We wanna make sure we're precise with our approach. So focus on volume and breathing mechanics. What I mean by breathing mechanics is a lot of people tend to breathe vertically. So think breathing with your neck or with your shoulders, but instead we wanna make sure that the diaphragm is doing a good job on the inhalation. So the diaphragm pulls down as you inhale. And so you wanna imagine that you're breathing down into your lungs and try to expand your rib cage, uh, both to the front, to the back, to the left and to the right. We want a full 360 degree expansion. We don't want to just breathe uh, into the top of our lungs or into our shoulders. So keep that in mind whenever you're working with respiratory training. We want to train two to three times per week in order to improve those volume qualities that we're after. Uh, depending on who you uh, read or look at, you can start between 50 and 65% of your measured FVC. And you want to start with between five and 10 minutes of total work and you wanna slowly work up over time towards 80 to 85% of your FVC for a total of about 20 minutes per session. This can be done in different ways. Some people do it in a continuous fashion. Some people break it up into intervals. I will let your strength and conditioning uh, brain figure out how to progress that over time. This is uh, what our job consists of. And you wanna, of course, use spirometry to assess your progress along the way. So now that we've addressed our FVC, FEV, and our ratio, what are the next steps to take if we wanna go one step farther in this realm of respiratory limitations and training. We've addressed the structural side of things or the capacity side of things as Daniel Crumback would, uh, would mention it. And now we can start to look at the functional aspect of things. What I mean by that is how we're gonna use our respiratory frequency, tidal volume, minute ventilation during our sport, during our effort. Uh, this is obviously gonna necessitate some uh, further measurements with tools such as the VO2 Master or the Panoe to get ventilation data. We will touch on that on a future presentation. I of course wanna give credit where credit is due. I didn't invent any of this. I just learned from people that have done all the work before me. And uh, namely here, Daniel Crumbach, Evan Pycon, Aaron Davis, Patrick Estes, and Andre Feldman. I wanna thank all those people for all the work that they've done and everything that they've shared along the way. These are all people that I look up to and I recommend that you go check out their work if you're interested in digging a little bit farther as well. I also wanna thank uh, Evan, Lou, Peo, Amar, and Guillaume for reviewing this presentation before I made it public. Thanks guys for finding the little uh, mistakes and details that had to be corrected. If you wanna dive a little bit deeper into all those concepts, I recommend that you check out the few podcasts that I have recorded uh, with some big hitters in the field of respiratory physiology and training in general. So make sure you go listen to those. They're all available in audio and video uh, format as well. Of course, if you have any questions, I'd love you to ask them directly uh, in the comments below. So don't be afraid to uh, ask all your questions. And I would really like to learn uh, what you learned today from this presentation. So I look forward to reading all your comments. As always, thanks a lot for watching all the way to the end. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you in uh, the next presentation. Take care.